Hello and welcome back guys, I am Folygon and this is day 28 of Sculptober. Today's prompt is adventure, and I took that in the direction of adventure time with BMO. But before we get in and talk about the process, click that subscribe button if you're new around here, and check out gumroad.com slash Folygon for downloads like my brushes, courses, or materials. If you've been around here for a while, then you've probably heard me say that simple doesn't always mean easy. And that is often the case when you're talking about simplistic shapes. BMO here from Adventure Time has a lot of those super simple shapes. And there are a lot of circles, triangles, rectangles, uh, rectangles with rounded edges. I mean, it's all really, really simple. But when you have a lot of that simplicity, having those simple shapes off by even a little bit can change the feel of the character completely. So I'm using a little tool called Spotlight right now. That is how I am applying that reference image into the uh, ZBrush scene directly here. I think a lot of new people come into ZBrush and they try to uh, use like an image plane system. I have found over the years that it's not a super quick way to work in ZBrush. I personally recommend using the Spotlight tool. Uh, what's kind of odd about this and maybe odd about a few different things in ZBrush is that the Spotlight tool is not actually meant to be used in this way. The Spotlight tool is kind of like a projection tool or a stencil. So you would import an image, overlay that over top of your model, and you could either project paint or form onto your character or, you know, whatever you're modeling or sculpting here in ZBrush. I am using it as a reference image though and to turn that off, all you have to do is go into the brush menu under samples and turn off spotlight projection. I keep that little toggle in my custom pop-up menu that you guys probably see me pull up all the time, just so I can have that for quick access. Uh, you can also change some settings to keep that off by default using the plugin Z Startup Master. A plugin that by now should come default with ZBrush in my opinion, it was actually made from one of the developers. So I'm not sure why it's not in the software by default quite yet, but if you guys are interested in downloading that and making ZBrush a whole lot easier to use, I am going to include a link on screen for you guys to a great tutorial that I recommend if you are brand new to ZBrush or if you've been using it for a while. In that video, I lay out a ton of quick tips that just make ZBrush a whole lot easier to use. So I'm now working on the face for BMO. A lot of very simple shapes going on up there as well. You'll notice that I'm actually using physical geometry here. I say physical, digital, <laughs> digital geometry, right? I, of course, could represent that with a simple texture, but in terms of just getting some super clean form, some super clean shapes and resolution there, I find that just creating that with geometry is really not all that hard, and I get kind of, you know, infinite resolution, similar in respect to if you were using like Illustrator to create vector art. So not technically infinite resolution, right? But I'm getting that super specific shape and I don't have to worry about the resolution of any texture that I apply to the surface because it's being represented by actual form. So like I said, lots of simple shapes going on here with the face. I'm using a combination of a lot of different tools here in ZBrush. You'll see me use the Z modeler brush a lot throughout the process, as well as what's called live Boolean. If you guys aren't familiar with Booleans, I use them a lot here in this one. Booleans are essentially this process of additive and subtractive methods to combine and remove geometry. There are a couple other operations as well, but for the most part, those are the main ones that you'll see. The subtractive example that I would say is a good one here is gonna be the face. I'm using geometry to push in on the face to create that screen and have that indented inside of his little game case body there. And I'm actually using two pieces to create that to have that bevel of the darker shape on the outside of the screen. He's got a lot of these kind of darker outlined areas, which is just a simple effect from 2D illustration, but uh, kind of representing that in 3D is a little more tough. I pick and choose a couple different places to apply that here on the character. I don't give the entire thing this darker outline as I felt that would look a little bit weird, but I do apply it to the area around the shapes in the mouth, and I also apply it around the screen of the face. The buttons on the chest are all just simple primitive pieces of geometry, but just to make those a little bit more visually interesting, I add some bevels to those edges. A great tip for those that are interested in playing around with hard surface or poly modeling in general, bevel every edge. Bevel your bevels, like the more bevels, the better. Bevels are great for taking transitions from one plane to another and making them feel 
uh, like they have a lot more character. Instead of just going from one shape to the next or one edge or one face to the next, you have a little bit of a rest period between there. So the light will catch a little bit more around that edge and help to make it more visually interesting. Like imagine you're trying to make the most interesting cylinder possible. Like there's not too much you can do to a cylinder to make it uh, more interesting other than changing it to no longer be a cylinder. But if you bevel those edges, you know, it's still a cylinder, but it's just got a bit more visual interest around the areas where it transitions from top to side to bottom, etc. Using some more booleans on the side of the head to create this speaker, just some simple cylinders that I can indent in there and then duplicate. And then it's on to using a curve brush to create the arm for BMO. This is just a tube of geometry with the curve tube snap brush. It's a default brush that comes with ZBrush. I use it for a ton of different things. I use it for his arms and legs. I also use it on character's hair. So it's got a lot of different applications. Then on to using the text and 3D vector shape to find a font that is fairly close to the font that is on the side of BMO. Uh, I found something pretty close here. The M wasn't exactly how I wanted it though. So I just adjusted the shape very slightly and then began uh, getting that into position. Again, could have used a texture here, but I wanted to show off the text tool as well, and it's just quite a bit faster and easier to do it this way. Additionally, I could convert that text to a texture later on if I felt like it. But for here, it's just a lot faster to go through the process of using the text Z plugin here in ZBrush. The final thing I do here for BMO is create his legs. I was originally going to create him sitting down, uh, but I found that in 3D, it didn't work quite as well as I wanted. So I decided to uh, straighten those legs and just make them stand up. It felt a bit awkward for the edge there. I probably could have angled the camera to hide it so it didn't feel super weird, but I just ended up making them stand. Either way, I think it would have worked out just fine. A Little bit of cleanup to those shapes with the Z modeler brush. And other than that, that is pretty much it here for BMO. I think I make a couple changes to like the thickness of him. He was feeling quite a bit too deep in the Z axis, so I ended up shrinking him that way. But really, other than that, that is the entire process here. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you are new around here, click that subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about digital sculpting, check out gumroad.com slash Folygon. There you can find some downloads like courses, brushes, materials, base meshes, all sorts of other good stuff. Check it out if you're interested. There's a link down below. A pretty short one for today. He only took an hour to make. Only a few days left here for Sculptober. Hope you guys have been enjoying the daily videos, and I will see you tomorrow with the prompt squish.